Hello guys, and today I'm going to show you a game I played where I promoted free pawns to free knights at the end of the game when it was already a won game, when I didn't need to do this at all, but I thought it would be very entertaining to do it. Now this was a real match um, online, I mean it's not like, you know, right, you know, a proper tournament or anything, but you know, what I mean is this was in a normal online game with somebody I not agreed with this with them beforehand, I just did it, okay? And I did it for entertainment value. As I said, they'd already lost, they had just a king, left they had nothing they could do. There was nothing they could do at all. They it was luck. they were get bound to lose. But rather than lose the conventional way I made them lose um, a more unconventional way. In fact, they actually resigned at the end before I could actually do a forced checkmate. Okay, but you'll see, and I'll be honest, if uh, having seen where I did this, if I was a famous person, or I'm stating the obvious, this would probably be talked about for years, right? Because it is that good, and that's surprising. But because I'm a nobody, nobody will probably ever find out about it. But it is rather an unusual way, in my opinion, of getting checkmate. When there was a very obvious and easy possible checkmate instead. Okay, now firstly, I'm not going to say that I played brilliantly for most of the game I played in an unusual way often. And I want to do some sort of strange dance. The idea was just to swap the king and the queen over. Not because it's good practice to do so, I just thought it would be funny. Now, the pawns on the right hand side that you see here will become useful in the future. A lot of it is just um, exchanging items at the moment. Yes, a Botez Gambit there by my opponent. They lost their queen. Never mind. They got a pawn. And, and I took a pawn. They could see I was trying to do a false check, but no, I, no, no, I wasn't. I could have done actually and taken the... Um, Get one more, sorry. Yes, they then take my bishop, I take their bishop, okay? So, so far, they're losing their pieces, but this is not the point. Now, I can take their rock. Gradually, I'm taking all their pieces. Now, <coughs> the pieces that are the most important on the board at this point are my three black pawns and the qu my queen. But you'd never believe so. Now, I'm going to actually, believe it or not, let them take my knight. Now, 
Now, it gets very interesting. Now, at this point, they can't win. Unless I do something really stupid, it's guaranteed checkmate. It's a classic checkmate, which I will show you later. Um, but, for now, we'll see what, what I actually did. Now, as I said, you would expect me to move the rock up and get a checkmate. You'd expect me to move the rock to the... To this row, the second row and then move the queen to the first row after they'd moved in fact i didn't i did not use the rock throughout the rest of the game the rest of the game was played entirely by moving the queen and the pawns the rook is is not used at all and is not used in any way to get the checkmate this is what is truly astonishing about this particular end game okay as i said if i was a famous person this would probably be written about for years and years and years but anyway let's see what happens they moved their king they just had to do something I assume I'm going to promote to a queen. Instead, I promote to a knight. Move the queen. Now, I'm going to promote that pawn to another knight. Now move this knight out of the way. So as you can see, I keep getting the Kinting to check. while trying to protect these particular knights. Now, this is a way of protecting these two knights, although they're already protected, okay? It's also a way of blocking them doing anything it was part of an idea I had later where I could move the Queen and get a checkmate so I found an alternative way of doing um, something later which is even better but nonetheless it was an idea I had that I could have the two um, Knights protecting each other okay so they couldn't be taken off now they have no choice, they have to keep moving between these two squares. I'm now going to promote this pawn to yet another knight. As I said, the rook is not used throughout the rest of this game. They can only move it to alternate between those two squares. Now, at this point, my opponent resigned. But what would have happened if we carried on? Well, I can now get a checkmate in various ways but I'm going to show you the most exotic way in my view 
And this is to move this particular knight. Check. We now have to move to the other square again. Now I'm going to use the third knight that I um, created after um, I promoted it from being a pawn. Checkmate. So there you go. Checkmate using three knights and a queen where all of those three knights were originally pawns. As I said, if I had been a famous person, that would, ending would probably be talked about in the chess world for years, because I believe it is quite exotic. Okay? There are other ways of doing this. If I go back, I said there was As I said, at this point, my opponent had resigned. But let's look at an alternative to get checkmate. Now, I had to be very careful here not to get stalemate. Okay, with an alternative that I intended to do. Because if I move something wrongly here, I could get stalemate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my king. The only reason I'm doing that is just purely and simply symbolic to force them to make a move. They would then have to move here, which is the only legal move. Then I move this knight here, check, and then I have to move the king there, and now checkmate. That move does not use this particular knight. It does actually stop it being taken, so yeah, so no, no, that particular night, sorry, this particular ending I've just created now does not use the third created night, that might as well have not happened. So I could, for example, have used that particular ending. So we go back to there, for example, when there wasn't a third night. Again, I could just have done a move, just a fourth. Just a minute, wait. Just a minute. Again, I could have just simply done something like that. I then have to move there. I then have to move there. So I've got mass. Okay. 
And then, so I was just having some um, trouble with the trackball. Okay, and that would be checkmate. And that would be without creating the um, third knight by promoting the pawn. But I just thought it would be really funny and amusing to actually promote the pawn as well. So I would have three knights on the board, okay? If I go back further, Now, a more conventional way of doing it at this point would be this. So at this point, a more conventional version would be to do this. Now they have to move they have to move somewhere. It doesn't matter where they move. Wait a minute. No, 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 that was the actual move they did. So this was the move they actually did. Okay, so now the conventional move would be to do that. It doesn't matter where they move. Even if they move nearer to one of my pieces to threaten it. Next move, checkmate. That would be the standard checkmate without promoting any of the pawns at all but I just thought it would be beautiful if I could actually do it to actually promote the pawns into knights and get a checkmate and it was an absolutely beautiful checkmate okay my original version this is standard this the queen and rook is a standard checkmate for those who are newer to chess it is nothing clever at all it is standard but the three knights from three pawns checkmate I thought was very good. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Bye.